Welcome to the jungle guys. Today we are going to be learning about probably the most infamous snake in the world, the black mamba. We're going to be going through some of the myths, some of the legends and the truth behind the snake. So here we have the culprit, the man, the myth, the legend, the black mamba. This little girl here, she was caught recently in someone's house. So we thought what a great opportunity to do a little bit of filming with her, teach you more about the snake and then we can set her on her way. I'm going to get her out the tub. So this is probably more of the risky part of it, other than handling it, of course. Handling it's a bit of a risky part. But on a warm day like this, this snake is super quick. Fastest moving snake in the world, 16 kilometers an hour. As soon as I open this tub, she's probably going to shoot off. So the video might get a bit bumpy, but bear with us. Let's bring her out here. Slow movements are so necessary for mambas. Any kind of a quick movement, tends to startle the snake. That's why we're also using a hook stick. A grab stick, necking her, boring for a video. And also, I give her the impression that I'm a predator. I want her just to be able to move. Have a look at that snake, guys. Let's just kick this tub away quickly without startling the snake too much. Okay, have a look at that snake. She is absolutely massive. Now, what's crazy about this is that this snake is probably only a year old. They can hit almost two meters in their first year of growth. Now I'm not the tallest guy in the world, I'm about 1 meter 80, but you can see she's a bit bigger than me. So she must be very close on the 2 meter mark at the moment. Now, let's get into the nitty gritty of it. Let me get into a nice position here. What makes these snakes so dangerous? Why is there so many legends about this crazy, crazy snake? Okay guys, so here we have the black mamba. She's in a tree, she's relatively close to both of us. But as long as we don't make any harsh movements or sudden movements, she should calm down. Now these snakes are extremely arboreal, which also makes them quite difficult to handle because they can shoot up a hook stick quite quickly. The stories of black mambas standing up, hitting the front windscreen out of a land cruiser, all of that, it all comes down to, basically, if I come to your house and on the way there, I see a black mamba. Now I get to your house and I tell you, man, you won't believe it. On the way here, I saw a black mamba and you go, yo, what happened? I said, well, it sat on the rock and now I'm here. Pretty boring story. But if I tell you that this snake stood up, spat flames, swore at my mother, called me all the names under the sun, it's a little bit more of an interesting story. Now all of a sudden you want to hear more because of the, the stigma that goes with the snake. Now, don't get me wrong in saying that this is a calm, relaxed snake because it is not. Okay, Mambas are probably one of the most skittish snakes that you can come across. Any kind of quick movement, any kind of fright that they get, they tend to stand up, spread a small hood, open their mouths up, and then gape. But given the opportunity, the snake will always go away. Of course, if you've got it in your house and it's in the corner and he's got nowhere to go, every animal in the world has a fight or flight response. If you take away the flight, only thing that's left is fight. Now, before she gets too much body there, I'm going to bring her back around. But as you can see, so far, we don't have too much of a reaction from the snake. Now, I could get a reaction out of the snake. I could work her up. I could act like a wally and jump all over the place. That's unnecessary. I'm not here to teach you about how dangerous and how deadly these snakes are. I'm here to teach you about how beautiful them they are and how to be around these animals, especially if you're a South African living here. These snakes are found throughout the place. They're actually so much more common than what people think. Now, often on Facebook, you'll see pictures of uh, how do you identify a venomous snake? slit eyes, um, pits, all of that type of stuff. That doesn't work too well here in South Africa because if you have a look, Bex, you can come a little bit closer. That's got round pupils and that's probably one of the most dangerous snakes in the world. Now this snake has a potent, potent, potent neurotoxic venom. One of the fastest acting venoms that you can find. So to a normal person, if you're bitten by the snake, you're looking at about an hour before you're dead. Some people within five minutes start to go paralyzed, which is a bit of a problem if you're on your own, because I don't know if you've ever tried to drive a car paralyzed. A little bit difficult. Uh, okay, now, if any animal in the world has a bunch of urban legends attached to it, this is probably number one on your list. I'm sure all of your countries have got that one snake, like in America, the Cottonmouth, um, Australia, Taipans, brown snakes, all of that. They've all got these myth sets around them. So let's put a little bit of fact behind it. Number one, will this snake chase me? That depends on you, okay? If you do not give this animal a chance to get away and you take away the flight response, what does it have left? All it has is fight. And in that case, yes, he'll come out boxing as hard as he can. But 
if you leave it alone it'll leave you alone now i know that's a little bit difficult if you've got it in your kitchen kind of hard to give up your own house over a snake but that's why people like me come in we'll come and catch it we'll risk our lives we'll set it free in the bush and you don't have to worry about it now another legend about these snakes is that they'll actively search you out i once got told a story when i was living in limpopo there was this black mamba that lived up on a hill and it will wait for people to leave from the village now if anyone's ever been to south africa and you've seen our savannah we've got pretty long glass now this is where the story gets quite interesting they would say that this snake could wait on the top of the hill and watch people leaving the village and see one person two people snake would think not enough three people still not enough we'll wait for five or six people to walk out the village then the snake would bite its own tail making a circle roll down the hill at a speed as it got to the people boom 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 boom, boom kill them all is that true probably not try and roll a bicycle tire down that same hill it won't get too far so for generations especially with the local people anyone who's had any kind of an experience with a snake there's always all these myths and legends about it legends about snakes that the tail is on this side of the road and the head is on that side of the road now my question is why have none of the snake catchers found a snake that big the biggest one that we think of that uh, that there's record of i suppose is a 4.3 meter snake now that was a long time ago i've never seen a photo so i can't actually give you the truth behind that but on average you're looking at a 2.5 2.7 to sometimes three meter snakes now those are caught relatively rarely however a two meter snake very common this is not a black snake it's a gray snake some places they've got almost an olivey color in tanzania i've seen them with beautiful bands along the tail so why do we call these snakes black mambas? Well, that's because of the color of the inside of his mouth. Inky jet black mouth. We'll open that up for you in a bit and we'll show you what her mouth looks like. These snakes have got incredible eyesight. Most of the time, if a mamba is a good couple hundred meters away from you, it'll see you and it'll move. It'll be gone before you've even seen it. Super quick snakes, preying predominantly on rodents. They eat a whole bunch of rats. There's been stories of them eating Dussies. I've seen a picture of one eating a cat in someone's house. So these guys will pretty much take on whatever they could, especially when they get nice and big. Same as what we saw with the green mamba, beautiful smooth scales. Now I hate this word, but often people say a good way to identify them is a coffin shaped head. Now I feel like that just adds more to the stigma. To be fair though, it is quite coffin shapey, but I just wish there was another way. Maybe someone who's watching knows really good at maths and knows what kind of shape that is, like a, I don't know, <laughs> a pot in use or something. Okay, so coffin shaped head, smooth body scales, and a large snake. Quite easy to, uh, easy to identify. We have got some non venomous snakes that look quite similar, like for example, an olive house snake, but generally they're a much darker coloration. Okay, guys, so what we're going to do now. I'm going to restrain the snake, which means I'm going to hold her behind the head. I'm going to show you the inside of that inky black mouth. And then we're going to do something that might be a little bit crazy, but I think it's a great way to show you that these snakes don't want to chase you. Okay, so let's get her over here before I give it away what we're going to do. Let's get her up and out the tree. Bring her over. So what we're going to do now is we're going to restrain the snake. And then I'm going to show you its inky black mouth. And then I'm going to give you a practical example. But these snakes don't want to chase you at all okay so let's do this now this is probably the most predatory thing i could do to the snake holding her behind the head is exactly what something that would want to eat her would do so i know right now the snake is not happy with me so if you come in a little bit closer becca please don't pull on your snake coming a little bit closer there we have that inky black mouth okay that is where the mamba gets his name from you can also have a look right on the front of the face tiny little fangs now what we can do here is pull that back and you guys can see the fangs look at those front fixed fangs all she needs to do is break the skin and then the venom's in there now if i had to just scratch myself with the snake's fang right now it would be enough to kill me okay so now i've grabbed it behind the head i've pulled her teeth out so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to release the snake now we're going to see will the snake chase me Will he come, kill me, kill Rebecca, bite his tail, roll down the hill and kill five people down the road? I don't think so. Okay, so let's make sure we keep a hook stick close to us because these snakes are exceptionally fast, like we mentioned earlier. So she might get away from me now. I don't think the neighbors will be too happy if I release a mamba in the yard. Okay, let's put her down over here. There she is. 
back up. Now if I move around here, where's she gonna go? Is she turning to come back at me? Check it her flicking her tongue, figuring out where's it safe, where can I go? And first thing she does is go completely the opposite direction to me. She doesn't want anything to do with me. Now let me grab her quickly before we lose the snake. There you guys can see they're starting to spread a little bit of hood. Now again, fight or flight. I'm not giving her that option to flight. I'm bringing her back. I want her to come back here. You can't go in the tree. You can't go in the tree. So what happens? She starts to get more and more defensive. See, she still wants to get away. Now, 97% of snake bite in South Africa is illegitimate, meaning someone's trying to catch, kill, or move that snake. This snake is exceptionally fast. So now you can picture if this was a stick, and I go to hit her, but I miss. I hurt her somewhere down in the body. If I hit her here, she's got enough body to come back and hit me and bite me. So if you see a snake like this, call someone. If it's like where it is now, leave it alone. She won't be there in the morning. All right, guys. Now we've had enough fun with this snake. I hope you guys all learned something a little bit more about black mambas. I don't expect you to love them, but I do expect you to fear them. Something I say in all my shows, if this was a lion, I wouldn't be going to fetch the spade if it was in my yard, now would I? Have respect for these animals, they are equally as dangerous as all the rest and equally as important. So the more we learn about them, the more we respect them, the more we can conserve them.